Good morning everyone. Welcome back to GK today. And today we'll be discussing most important MCQs for 14th of July 2023. Let's start with our session. Jens Stoltenberg has been elected as the head of which grouping for the third time in a row. Basically he is the secretary general of NATO and he will head the NATO for one more year after his contract was extended once again. So his time as secretary general was due to end in the month of October while his term had already been extended three times, right? And he is from the country Norway. Basically he is an economist and the former prime minister and this announcement comes a week before the next NATO summit that is to take place in the country Lithuania. Okay. What is the full form of NATO? North Atlantic Treaty Organization headquarters lies in Brussels in Belgium. Also don't forget that recently Finland has become the 31st country to join the NATO. Fine. So who is the head of NATO? Once again, this is Jens Stoltenberg. Now, if we talk about few important and the recent appointments, the first one is recently Reserve Bank of India has appointed Mr. P. Vasudevan as the next executive director. Also, we have seen that State Bank of India has appointed Mr. Kameshwar Rao as the chief financial officer. After that, Coal India has appointed Mr. P.M. Prasad as its chairman and MD, right? After that, Mr. Sanjeev Puri has been given the extension for his tenure of being the chairman and MD of ITC board. So now his term has been extended for the next five years, okay? After that, Olympic Council of Asia has elected Sheikh Talal as its new president. Okay, so these are the few important and the recent appointments that we have to remember. The next question is, which country is organizing the United Nations Security Council's first ever meeting on the threats of artificial intelligence? So United Nations Security Council will hold the first ever meeting on the threats of artificial intelligence on 18th of July. And this particular meeting is organized by the United Kingdom. Basically, it will see the global leaders discussing the potential threats of artificial intelligence to the international peace and security. And this meeting has been presented as a centerpiece of the UK's presidency of the council. Basically, you have to remember that UK is organizing the first ever meeting of United Nations Security Council on the threats of artificial intelligence. Now, there is one more important question related to international current affairs. The United Kingdom, Canada, Sweden and Ukraine have jointly launched a case against which country at the International Court of Justice. So these countries have jointly launched a case against the country Iran at the United Nations International Court of Justice over the downing of a Ukrainian passenger jet in the year 2020, which basically resulted in the death of all 176 passengers and crew. And that's why the four countries want the International Court of Justice to rule that Iran illegally shot down the Ukraine International Airlines plane and to order the country to pay the compensation to the families of the victims, okay? These four countries are very, very important. You have to remember their names, UK, Canada, Switzerland, and Ukraine. These countries have filed this case against the country Iran, okay? Also, don't forget that Iran is the ninth and the latest country to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now, a few days back, we have talked about the national space mission for earth observation and this mission belong to the country 
Australia. Why it was in news? Because recently Australia was forced to abandon this mission because of some financial constraint, right? Then there is a newspaper that was in news these days. It is Wiener Zeitung, and it is one of the world's oldest newspapers from the country Austria. Recently, it ceased its daily print edition after providing service of 320 years of publication. Okay, so that's why it was in news. You can be asked that Wiener Zeitung newspaper that was in news these days belongs to which country? So answer would be Austria. Next question is. Zanzibar where the first IIT global campus is to be set up is located in which particular country actually a memorandum of understanding has been signed for the establishment of an IIT Madras campus in Zanzibar in the country Tanzania and this is the first IIT campus ever to be established outside of India okay and this Zanzibar is the uh, Tanzanian archipelago of the coast of East Africa Basically, you have to remember that the first IT campus that is to be established outside India is to be set up in the country Tanzania. Fine. Now, apart from it, what is the expansion of DP DP bill, which was cleared by the cabinet recently? So this is Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, and Union Cabinet has cleared this bill recently. Basically, the clearance paves the way for the bill. to be introduced in parliament in the upcoming monsoon session and the data protection legislation specifies the norms on management of personal data of indian residents and it requires explicit consent from the people whose data is collected and used okay so uh, what is the uh, full form of dpdp bill answer would be digital personal data protection bill then apart from it Which institution has constituted a working group on implementing Reserve Bank of India's recommendations on the working of asset reconstruction companies? So this is Indian Banks Association. Recently, they have constituted a five-member working group for implementing the recommendations of Reserve Bank of India on this working of the asset reconstruction companies. And this group has been constituted. at the ages of reserve bank of india obviously basically this group comprises of uh, mr ajit kumar who is md and ceo of secondary loan market association the second name in this list is hari hara mishra and he is the ceo of association of air seas in india then the third name is maithili bala subramanian who is the executive director and the fourth and the fifth names are the senior officials from state bank of india who is dharmendra pali and icici bank anupma ranade okay so names are not that important only thing you have to remember is this working group has been constituted by indian banks association which city is the host of the meeting of space economy leaders under india's g20 presidency so under india's uh, g20 presidency the fourth edition of Space Economy Leaders Meeting is scheduled to be held in Bangalore and this year the theme is towards a new space era where era stands for economy responsibility and alliance okay so this is in line with india's g20 summit's theme of one earth one space and one future so which city is the host of this meeting of space economy leaders under india's g20 presidency this is bangalore Now here if we talk about few important summit and the conferences the first one is summit for a new global financial pact and this summit is hosted by the country France second one is the third world hindu conference and this conference is set to take place in Bangkok in the month of November and this conference is organized by the world hindu foundation After that international conference on green hydrogen has been hosted by New Delhi city and uh, the 8th global pharmaceutical quality summit has been hosted by Mumbai recently okay next question is Lalyan Zuwala Changte and Manisha Kalyan who were in the news recently play which sport so india and mumbai city fc footballer lalyan zuwala changte was named as 
द ऑल इंडिया फुटबॉल फेडरेशन मेन्स फुटबॉलर ऑफ द ईयर फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड मनीषा कल्याण हैज बीन नेम्ड एज द ए आई For this time period, also she recently became the first Indian to play in UEFA Women's Champion League. Okay, so both of these players are associated with football. Now, apart from it, which city is the host for ODI Cricket World Cup 2023? This is Ahmedabad. Second news is India has won total 202 medals in special. Olympics, World Games, in which out of these two hundred two medals, seventy six were gold. Fine. After that, two players were in news these days. The first name is Sutirtha Mukherjee, and second name is Ayhika Mukherjee. Why are they are important? Because they have recently clinched the first women's doubles title in the WTT Contender Tunis. So you can be asked that. both of these players are associated with which sport answer would be table tennis okay and who has won the zec ladies open title answer would be diksha dagar from which country she belong to answer would be india okay which country has knocked out zimbabwe out of cricket world cup zimbabwe was knocked out of the cricket world cup to be held in india this year and scotland has recorded a 31 run win over zimbabwe and then in their next match got beaten by netherlands by four wickets so basically scotland has knocked out zimbabwe out of cricket world cup now if we talk about important grand prixes of 2023 the winner of canadian grand prix is max verstappen after that who is the winner for austrian Grand Prix. This is again Max Verstappen. Then who has won the Azerbaijan Grand Prix tournament? So winner of this tournament is Sergio Perez. Also Sergio Perez has won the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Okay. Now who is one Hindu Hasaranga? He was in news these days because he took three consecutive five wicket haul in the ODIs against the country Sri Lanka. Okay. Now next is. Which state or the union territory has launched a basic income scheme for women named as Kalaignar Magalir Urmai Thogai? So Tamil Nadu has recently issued the guidelines for this particular scheme, and as per the guidelines, women with an annual family income of less than two point five lakh rupees and the families that are not holding land worth more than five acres of wetland. and 10 acres of dry land also their annual household electricity consumption is below 3600 units would be eligible to avail themselves of a monthly help of 1000 rupees in the state of tamil nadu okay so this is a scheme from the state of tamil nadu now odisha was in news these days because of raja festival also it was in news because of a camera project what is the uh, basic aim of this ekamra project so basic aim is to enhance the surroundings of lingraj temple that lies in bhubneshwar okay and uh, which state has recently celebrated the kharji puja so kharji puja is celebrated in the state of tripura okay and few days back swarnim himalaya campaign was in news and this is a campaign of himachal pradesh state fine Where was the seventh edition of Japan India Maritime Exercise 2023 held? So the seventh edition of bilateral Japan India Maritime Exercise was hosted by Indian Navy, and it was conducted in Vishakhapatnam from 5th to 10th of July 2023. And this exercise was conducted in two phases. The first one is harbor phase at Vishakhapatnam. that comprises of professional sports and social interactions and the second one is the war phase in which the two navies jointly hone their war fighting skills at sea okay so gmex is the exercise between japan and india and this year the venue is visakhapatnam that means india okay now apart from it 
where was the seventh edition of salvex between indian navy and us navy held recently first of all you have to remember that salvex is the exercise between india and us and this was its seventh edition recently it took place in kochi from 26th of june to 6th of july 2023 and this addition of the exercise witnessed the active involvement of both the naval forces with the participation of ins nirikshak from us side salver was there as well as specialist diving and eod teams okay so you can be asked that where was the seventh addition of salvex between indian navy and us navy held recently so answer would be kochi also few days back tarang shakti was in news and tarang shakti has been conducted by Indian Air Force recently basically it is the largest air force exercise and the aim of this exercise is to strengthen the military cooperation among the participating air forces okay which company has won the gem timely payments cpsc's award for the year 2023 this is nlc india limited which is a navratna company which works under ministry of coal has recently bagged the government e marketplace award in the category of timely payments for the year 2023 and the award has been conferred to nlc india limited for its outstanding contribution in improving the reliability of e market practices of the government e marketplace and this company has registered a growth of 984.93 crore rupees in the gem procurements during the financial year 2022 to 23 so this award has been presented to nlc india now here if you talk about few important awards and honors recently michael rosen has been awarded the pen pinter prize of 2023 then very famous music composer and singer shankar mahadevan has received honorary doctorate in uk and our prime minister narendra modi has been conferred with the highest honor of the country egypt which is known as order of the nile and the highest award of suriname country has been given to our president draupadi murmu when is the world kishwahili language day celebrated every year by the united nations so every year 7th of july is celebrated by the united nations as the world Kiswahili Language Day and a resolution in this regard was adopted in the year 2017 in order to inform and raise awareness of their history culture and use basically this language is the first african language to be recognized in such a manner by the united nations and this year the theme is unleashing kiswahili's potential in the digital era this was a whole thing for this day okay now apart from it in which nuclear power plant in india the core catcher has been installed recently so in the kudankulam nuclear power plant the core catcher which is an integral component of the safety system for handling severe accidents has been installed recently and this system is installed beneath power unit number 5 and it weighs over 156 metric tons okay so this nuclear power plant lies in the state of tamil nadu and it is based on the russian wwer 1000 reactor design basically you can be asked that kudan kulam nuclear power plant is located in which indian state answer would be tamil nadu and now the last question says karu vattu mana vasudevan nambuthiri who was seen in the news recently is associated with which profession so he is renowned artist and recently he passed away that's why he was in news basically he illustrated characters of top malayalam writers like mt vasudevan nair urub etc he was not only a artist but also a painter sculptor and art director okay so recently he passed away that's why he was in news he is a artist So these are the most important current affairs and the news from today and now let's start with today's quiz here on the slide you can see five questions 
which have been taken from the past two three days current affairs pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section so please be honest and do not cheat with yourself so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session these were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs till then stay tuned thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to gk today with this news at sana signing off